When Gina Carano decided to speak the truth and tell what she thought was happening in the world around her, she probably never expected that Star Wars and Lucasfilm would turn against her. She probably also never thought that the former personal assistant to one Mr. Weinstein would allegedly be funding some of that effort. That's in the lawsuit. Now, there's a response to the lawsuit from Disney. And perhaps to Gina's great surprise, Disney is now calling on the former attorney to Mr. Weinstein. So we're all wondering what's going on with Gina Carano and so many connections to Weinstein. Hello folks, welcome back to another video of excellence here on the Pro Channel. Going places many others won't go and definitely doing it in a way that we will still be on the air tomorrow, we hope. Joining us is Vash Sky and LW Ghost, both of that Park Place. Gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pro. Happy to be here. Folks, we're going places that you didn't even know we could go, and it's going to be truthfully told. Here we go. All right, starting off with an article out of That Park Place, this by John F. Trent. The Walt Disney Company files to dismiss Gina Carano's lawsuit and argues the First Amendment provides a complete defense. All right, it says the Walt Disney Company filed a motion to dismiss the lawsuit brought by Gina Carano against the company and argued the First Amendment provides a complete defense against Carano's claims. Carano, with the help of Elon Musk and X, sued the Walt Disney Company at the beginning of February. The lawsuit is a civil action arising from defendants' wrongful termination of Carano's employment in relation, in retaliation, excuse me, for Carano's lawful exercise of her right to speak and express her views. Specifically, defendants under the regime of former Disney CEO Bob Chapek fired Carano because of her posts on various social media platforms, including X. Carano composed and published the post while she was off duty and away from the workplace. Goes on to talk about how Gina has been treated very unfairly in comparison to her co-workers, People like Mark Hamill, Pedro Pascal, although it seems that Pedro Pascal is on board uh, with Gina and thinks she's been treated poorly. We don't know that. We're basing that off what Gina Carano has said. You can see the original post here. I guess back then it was still a tweet uh, where she was saying, hey, we don't want to go back to this. Don't hate your neighbors. Uh, that has been twisted and turned in every possible way. But uh, now, Vash, one of the things that is not out in the, in the press, I guess, is something that you have been working on diligently. Folks, it's time for some exclusive info that you just might not hear anywhere else. Vash, you have done a tremendous job of preparing this. Please share with the audience out there in the most safe way possible uh, what is going on with connections to Weinstein aplenty. Uh, yeah, this is a story I've been uh, keeping track of for a while, and when the complaints came out against, or the, I should say Disney's response to Gina Carano was first unveiled today, it uh, it, it reminded me of, of a particular attorney that's worked for them before that has levied um, similarly uh, malformed arguments, let's just say. I'll, I'll put it as kindly as possible. It didn't go so well and, in Florida, did it, Vash? It did not. So Daniel <laughs> Petroselli, that is the attorney uh, here. And Pro is exactly right here. If you remember that federal lawsuit that uh, Disney filed against uh, Ron DeSantis and others for you know, essentially doing away with the RCID and forming the CFTOD, well, that also, if you look at that legal filing right there, um, on the very last page, Pro Hoc Vice, well, you'll see a familiar name that uh, we will note this video right here. Here it is, Daniel Petroselli. Um, people will also remember him, interestingly enough, as connected to Scarlett Johansson, of all places. So Disney lawyer Daniel Petroselli calls, quote, Black Widow lawsuit, at quote, orchestrated PR campaign. So uh, he says right here, it is obvious that this is a highly orchestrated PR campaign to achieve an outcome that is not obtainable in the lawsuit. Petroselli said, no amount of public pressure can change or obscure the explicit contractual commitments. The written contract is clear as a bell. So this is a guy who has... Uh, He's everywhere, been, Bash. He's everywhere with Disney. He, oh, much more than that. Disney. Much more than that. If you Where, go to his bio over on the O'Melveny Myers uh, uh page where they're celebrating the fact that the Hollywood Reporter has put him on his their list of legal legends. 
Uh, oh, let's find was, out how he started being a legal legend. Well, he started Not a out, league of legends, folks. A he started legal out legend. as the guy that sued on behalf of the father of Ron Goldman against OJ Simpson. And then he de he defended uh, CEO of Enron, Jeffrey Skelling, against fraud and insider trading charges. They got him on some, but he got him off of others. He defended Warner Brothers trying to maintain the Superman franchise, Disney for the Winnie the Pooh franchise, Marvel for the rights of iconic Marvel characters. Uh, he's largely an intellectual property kind of guy, but he does other things too. And he says that he's always avoided the Hollywood lawyer moniker because I never wanted to be branded as such. I always <laughs> wanted to be considered a lawyer and litigator of all types. Oh, and the thing well, that's, that's still on his bucket list is going to the U.S. Supreme Court, which he's never done. But he has, he has, uh, he has represented some rather scandalous individuals, some people who are in jail for a very long time for very bad things. Vash, tell us about it. Yes, uh, he was the lawyer to Harvey Weinstein. Interestingly enough, he actually defended uh, or represented Harvey in a number of, uh, of of cases, if I'm not mistaken, and a number of allegations. Interestingly enough, this is via the New York Times right here. Uh, upon somebody suffering at the hands of Harvey, uh, that person confronted Harvey directly and, uh, well, this lawyer, Daniel Petroselli, was present, saying, quote, We'll drag you through the mud by your hair if you ever speak out about this. Uh, and uh, she recently just testified, interestingly enough. And uh, that's exactly what Harvey uh, Weinstein's lawyers did, unfortunately, which was uh, tragic to see. He was still convicted, of course. Uh, but uh, who we're dealing with right here? This is not. This is not a good dude. This is. This is a a hatchet man. He's worked on uh, multiple Disney cases before. Like I said, that that horrible Scarlett Johansson uh, response right there. That 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 case that was just struck down. And by the way, Vash, is now in largely, the appellate process. We largely thought the reason they responded that way with uh, with ScarJo was because. That was the chance of us getting to see Disney Plus numbers and that being made public. And that was not going to happen. And folks, we've done a video in the last 48, 72 hours that gives you some reason as to why they would not have wanted those numbers to be public. Uh, Mr. Ghost, you have a storied career in Hollywood. <laughs> um, but I got to say... A tale you know, as old as time, you might even say. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> what do you make of all of these connections going back to Weinstein where wow. Gina Carano is you know being asked according to her lawsuit to submit money to a uh, an effort to destroy her own career that's funded at least in part by the former personal assistant to Weinstein now the attorney who represented Weinstein is coming after Gina Carano and I'll tell you folks we're going to have Ron Coleman this afternoon we're going to go through that lawsuit the, the the response and what he thinks of it it's pretty vicious it's pretty darn vicious Lou uh is is this normal or is this some kind of bizarre world even for Hollywood? Well, it's normal now. As as I said about a different story we covered recently, in the old days, somebody asked me what would have happened. The answer was everybody would have been paid off and you never would have heard about it. But that isn't as easy to do nowadays when everybody's got a phone with a recording device and everybody's got a web page and a, and a Twitter account and people share. Now, the interesting part of this entire lawsuit is this. Um, it has been suggested that because the federal law on political speech and protecting it and being First Amendment protected is only about your rights against the government trying to shut down your political speech, that somehow a private company doing it doesn't apply. Now, that may be true in other jurisdictions, but in California, where they had the experience of the blacklist, for example, uh, there is a whole separate section of law in California that says private companies cannot restrict the public speech of their employees. And I, the part of this I find so galling, to tell you the truth, is that they're making the entire thing based around this tweet about the, the Germans and, and, and Jews. And as a Jew, I'm absolutely against prejudice. But she said so much more. And when you read um, the line, a Disney former CEO explained that her views, quote, didn't align with company values, including its, quote, values of respect, values of decency, values of integrity, and values of 
inclusion. Well, what is inclusion a code word for? It's got nothing to do with stormtroopers, I got to tell you that, or at least not the traditional kind or the galactic kind. There well was said. so much more. The beep bop boop thing, uh, the the uh, part where they wanted her to go to what they call a struggle session with 75 employees to tell her why she was evil because she wouldn't put her pronouns on her social media. Uh, that's a got, but, they, but this whole case from Petrocelli is the hot button issue, right? And Lou, what would have then, happened? What would have happened without Elon? Uh, she would have been scared to death because this guy is a heavy hitter, and this firm that he's with, O'Melveny Myers, uh, these guys are the original law firm in Hollywood. They've been around in California since I don't know, right after the gold rush, something maybe not that, but a long time. And they're very, very, very big and very, very powerful. And uh, to give you an idea, I looked up their page about how come they're so wonderful. Remember, it's OMM, O. Melvany Myers. So all of their little patented goodies start with OMM, O-M-M. <laughs> They've got one, believe it or not, called Omniscient. Our latest initiative brings the firm closer than ever to knowledge management's holy grail, the power to deliver the right information to the right people at the right time. Omniscient, quote, knows what users need before they even ask for it. Anybody <laughs> afraid of AI yet? Automatically Lou, uh, connecting lawyers with critical information and saving valuable time. Oh, my God. Lou, if, if somebody says to you, hey, uh, we're going to name this program, we're going to use uh, Omniscient, that's when you say, uh, rain check on that. Not sure we want to be labeled as evil. And there's no way around that if but we're going to label proud ours of as it. omniscient. <laughs> they're proud of it, for God's sakes. Oh, among the other people they've uh, represented, TikTok, WhatsApp, um, JFK Airport, AT&T. These guys are all over the map, guys. They have, uh, what is it, 800 lawyers and in, in I forget how many offices all around the world. And they carry a big stick. And therefore, when they make a ridiculous claim like this case, this idea that somehow she violated, they didn't violate her First Amendment rights by telling her she's fired for speaking her mind, but uh, theirs were violated by the state of Florida saying this law we put in, we have the power to remove. Oh, what a great point, Lou. What I a mean, great there, point. First Amendment... <laughs> First Amendment. Do not ask for whom it tolls. It tolls for thee too, Bob. That's right. Well, that's why Bash I looked into. Dogs. Well, yeah, that's why I looked into this uh, because I was like, hmm, arguing the First Amendment. That's interesting. Where have we heard that before? Yeah, well, obviously, exactly. that's the that's the Florida case right there. But this argument that uh, that the First Amendment somehow applies in, in in this case right here, like you said, Lou, it's it's. It's complicated by California's unique set of laws, and uh, I, I just don't think, um, especially what Gina's alleging, is that there was unequal treatment. We've seen Pedro uh, post some stuff, compare stuff, talk about stuff in a similar manner that Gina did, especially regarding, like you said, the, the, the uh, event in the 1940s. Um, and then we, we've seen also Carl Weathers uh, be outspoken as well. But we didn't used, see the, the same, same treatment in those didn't cases. He? Didn't Carl Weathers use the exact same comparison, it seems well, to me? Well, Pedro Pascal was making the, the exact same comparison in the opposite way. Carl Weathers was uh, making the same, uh, what would you say, philosophical stance. I don't know that he was using uh, exactly the same method, but the same philosophy. And so that's that's really what we're going to talk about with Ron Coleman later today is can you can you fire a woman for holding views and a man holds the same views and not fire him and but you get to pick and choose and say well you know uh, it's our first amendment right to get rid of her but not not him oh, and, and, and nobody and, knows what's going on and more importantly when you talk to Ron can you can you segregate all of the various views she expressed and only mention the one that has the hot button n word well, in it and i don't know the n word that ends in r one of the most insane things lou is that they claim that it's it's so different because she was responding to anonymous users on Twitter. And it's like, uh. pre-Elon, everyone was anonymous because there was nobody outside of the verified blue checks. There was nobody who had their actual identities verified on Twitter. And oh, by the way, that's not to guarantee you that the person who is using that account is actually the same said person. So it's all it's just total nonsense. 
But will it will it get through in California? And, I don't and know. And by the way, let us assume for a minute that for some strange reason this court goes, uh, I don't know what the lawyerly equivalent of, you know what, crap crazy goes, and says, okay, you're right. Saying that about uh, uh, my people in the 1940s, comparing it to now, that was a wrong thing. So therefore, we'll throw the entire case out, including all the other instances she's complaining about, because, hey, what the heck, in for a penny, in for a pound? Well, there's a I lot mean, of pressure. I mean, I don't think there's they can win pressure. this point. But there's so many other points in the suit that they have totally ignored and asked for the entire thing to be wiped out because of this. That's a bit of a stretch. But, but again, in this case, in this case, if you're Lou, a little guy and this 800 lawyer firm around the world goes after you this way, you say, "Oh my God! Even though I'm right, it'll cost me everything I ever hoped to earn for the rest of my life to defend myself." And yeah. let's remember, 90 percent. I mean, I haven't got an official statistic, but I'm guessing. 90% of all lawsuits are not filed to go to court. They're filed to compel a settlement. Right. And, and Lou, there's tremendous pressure, I would say, in California for this not to go forward. I don't know if that will be successful, but this, this is going to open an entire can of worms in terms of, you know, what can you fire someone for on social media? So, all, you know, there's a trem tremendous number of questions here that are going to be brought out, even though well, I think Gina is clearly in the right. Uh, it's it's definitely going to set a precedent. One of the very much larger issues that doesn't get enough attention, I believe, is the fact that the day they fired her, her agent fired her too. Yes, now, yes. We have heard all about how Favreau and others were telling her she was going to be a big deal and they were going to do this spinoff and you're going out there, you're, you're a talented amateur now, but you're going to be a star and she was all excited. They couldn't even talk to her about that without talking to her agent first under the rules of the game in Hollywood. So if they went to this agent and said, hey, we want you to know we're about to dump her over this thing. And if you would like all the rest of your clients to receive, uh, shall we say, anti-preferential treatment, you'll keep her. Otherwise, you'll walk away, too, and look like a good guy joining us. Right. Now, I have no proof that that ever happened. But it stinks to high heaven, and it has industry-wide ramifications about the relationship, which SAG is very, 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 very strict about between actors and their agents and what the agents can do and can't do and how much agents are in bed with the employers rather than the employees. So that's a, that's a huge, huge, huge issue all by itself in the biz. Absolutely fair. Um, the... Lou, uh, you know, with this case is very interesting because uh, it, it obviously can have some big repercussions on not just Gina, but the entire industry at large. Um, your view on morality clauses uh, and the industry necessarily going back to a system in which they, they sort of um, had more control over what you could, could not say, the things you could and could not do uh, regarding well, you know, some of these hot Let's hot remember hot that all of, all of those morality clauses, and to explain to people who may not be aware of it, it used to be if you signed a contract with a studio, and in those days everybody got a seven-year-long contract, it wasn't a per-picture deal, right. uh, you agreed not to do anything that would reflect poorly on the studio and, more importantly, that would change your image to the public. The original instances of these were all about extramarital affairs and drugs. Those were the two big things that absolutely were verboten and that were hushed up and that were a big, big deal. Um, <laughs> the most famous probably being uh, Elizabeth Taylor and, and Richard Burton, uh, who were both married at the time they began having an affair on Cleopatra rather publicly and uh, who, by the way, are the stars of the next genre guys movie. But anyway, uh, <laughs> at that time, in fact. But my point is, all of those issues about uh, marital fidelity and certainly drugs have changed in the intervening time. They're not as big a deal. So if you're going to take morality as you will believe in the politics we believe in, whether they be uh, political, sexual, or otherwise, that's a whole different kettle of fish, gang. Plus, unlike features no longer you have a long-term contract unless it's a couple of picture deal but something like this with a tv series you still do and that's still analogous to the old long-term contracts but again you are responsible so's the studio it's we don't want you to do any of this stuff and in return 
we're going to make you a star. We're going to invest a lot of money in you. We're going to put money into your wardrobe and make sure you're seen in all the right nightclubs and all the right openings and premieres and get you coverage in all the fan magazines. Um, it's It was a big, big business presenting these people as uh, paragons of virtue and, and stars uh, of the heavens, let alone of Hollywood. Now... Well. Well, it's not. It's a lot more every man for himself than it ever was in the old days. It just is. James Gunn's it w- wasn't necessarily inhibited by what he posted. Uh, Pedro Pascal, Carl Weathers, none of those guys are are you know that they're still working. Uh, for but on the other hand, other studios, we still have no idea why Bo is no longer X Mening, do we? Uh, we do that's not. A fair point. So so there's you know it's it's a very. Um, instance by instance kind of a judgment. And that's the other thing about this, uh, which it shows by these comparable stars in the same show she was doing, saying things that got them zero uh, uh, public anyway, uh, reprobation from their employers. So, Now, folks, as we get ready to wrap up, we just want to say that, um, you know, one of the things we're not intending to promote here on this channel is the idea that if an attorney takes a client that is unsavory that, that, uh, that attorney is, you know, given the scarlet letter that they, uh, that they are marked for the rest of their career. That's uh, fair. I, I like what Alan Dershowitz has said in the past. You know, if you, uh, if you're a physician and a bad person comes and needs a, uh, a heart, heart surgery, you're a physician, you're a surgeon, you do the job and you do it as well as you can on every person you possibly can. Same thing right. with attorneys. It's just in this case, there are such strange connections here with Leslie Headland being allegedly part of this effort. We don't know that folks, but it's in the lawsuit. And and it's important to note, nobody forces this firm or this attorney to take this case. It's such a bizarre thing. It's who thing they choose and which way they choose to make it happen. And, and, and again, about Headland, she was a personal assistant to him. Well, yeah. in this case, where this lady who testified uh, said it, the personal assistant said, don't worry, I'll be there with you and everything will be fine. And then closed the door and walked away. And that was the routine. And when they put her on the stand, this lady named Hung, who had a job, I believe, similar to what Leslie had, she said, oh, well, that's because he wanted to discuss business privately. We did that all the time. So this was the technique. This was the technique. I'm going to make you a star. Come on, what do you say? Uh, yeah. And what she, what this lady said was, well, I'm engaged to be married. I don't want to have anything. Oh, come on. It's okay. And by the way, when he was uh, assaulting her, and that's the nicest way I can describe the details, you can all go look it up if you're that interested in the salacious details. He said, it's not like we're having sex. Or who does that remind you of, Miss Lewinsky? Um, you know? <laughs> there's there is a t- what's that Shakespearean line about there's a tide in the affairs of men which taken at the flood well there is when you asked about morality there is a this is moral for me and not for the attitude that goes on here in these levels of high power high money uh, high profile because remember uh, there are industries out there that have big bucks involved but they're not on your television every night and they're not on your uh, entertainment news show on the, on the screen. The attention factor of Hollywood, the fact that uh, not only as people interested for its own sake, but as a distraction perhaps from some of the really skullduggery stuff that goes on in industry and politics is pretty mm. profound. It's pretty profound. Yep. Indeed. Folks, we, uh, we try to, to uh, toe the line, be straight down the middle, call balls and strikes. Uh, we want to be objective and unbiased. In this case, though, I don't see any way other than just to say, go, Gina, go. And uh, we'll do our best to tell the truth and hold the line. Right now, uh, th- the people up against Gina, I won't say a bad thing about them, and that means I won't say something at all. All right, folks, we've come to the end. It's your turn. We ask that you be polite and kind and responsible in the comments, given the uh, subject matter. But like, share, and subscribe. Click it, stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. Vash Sky will be on That Park Place live today talking about this very topic, as will Mr. Ghost. Go check out That Park Place live at noon Eastern time and at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. Come back over here for Ron Coleman's take on what's going on here, the chances of success, and folks will continue to give you our best. So we'll say it as we always say it, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, 
keep learning, keep growing, and as always, keep having fun. Hey everyone, I'm Wilton the Troll, and I got a really important PAS. I just feel it's important to take a moment to reflect on the current slate of Star Wars movie. I mean, we haven't had a woman take the lead on any Star Wars projects whatsoever in Star Wars yet. And that's partly because other women who are leading Star Wars, they don't want to let that happen, which totally isn't stereotypical of women. Am I right, ladies? <laughs> but here we are, with director Sharmin Abinadab Chinook or something. Anyway, she's a woman who's bringing a lot of weight to Star Wars because of her, uh, pedigree. And yes, it's time for a woman to lead Star Wars. I mean, saying that has totally worked in every other sphere of life, especially politics. Come on, Hillary Clinton, you tell him that it's time for a woman to smash that patriarchy. Anyway, that's all I have to say, and I think it's important for you to know that. Thank you. <laughs>